Several videos ago, we introduced the idea of a Fourier series, that I could take a periodic function, we started with the example of this square wave, and that I could represent it as the sum of weighted sines and cosines. And then we took a little bit of an interlude, building, <laughs> building up some of our mathematical foundations, just establishing a bunch of properties of taking the definite integral over the period of that, of that periodic function, of sine and cosines, and we established all of these properties. And now we're going to get the benefit from establishing all of those because we're going to start actually finding a, at least a formulas for Fourier coefficients, and then we can apply it to our original square wave to see that, hey, this, is, this could actually be a pretty straightforward thing. So right over here, I have rewritten a Fourier series expression, or I've rewritten the Fourier series for a, a periodic function f of t. Let's say its period is 2 pi, and I'm going to use this and some of the properties that we have established to start solving for these for these actual coefficients. And what I'm going to do in this co in this video, I'm going to first sol try to solve for a sub zero, and then in the next video we're going to solve for an arbitrary a sub n, and either in that one or the next one we'll also start solve for an arbitrary b sub n. So to solve for a sub zero, what we're going to do is take the definite integral of both sides from zero to 2 pi. So zero to two pi dt of f of t. Well, that's going to be the same thing as going from zero to two pi of all of this stuff. And remember, this is an infinite series right over here. We have an infinite number of terms, and then we would have a dt out there. But we know from our integration properties, taking the definite integral of a sum, even an infinite sum, is the same thing as the sum of the definite integrals. So that's going to be the same thing as taking this integral dt plus this integral, and I, I could take this, the, the scalar out. Actually, let me not just not do that. Let me just write it like this. Zero to two pi dt, zero to two pi dt, zero to two pi dt. This is getting a little monotonous, but it'll be worth it. Zero to two pi dt, <laughs> zero to two pi dt, zero to two pi dt, and we'll do it for every single one of the terms. And now what's nice is we can look at our integration properties. This right over here, we could take that, we could take these coefficients out. We could take this a sub one, put it in front of the integral sign. The a sub two, put it in front of the integral sign. The b sub one, put it in front of the integral sign. And then all you're left with is an integral from zero to two pi of cosine of some integer multiple of t dt. Well, we established a couple of videos ago well, that's always going to be equal to zero. The integral from zero to two pi of cosine of some non-zero non -zero integer multiple of t, dt, that is equal to zero. And then the same thing is true for sine of mt. So this is gonna be fun. This is gonna be zero based on what we just saw. If you just take that, take that factor out of that integral, take that a sub one out of the integral, it's gonna be a sub one times zero. This is gonna be a sub two times zero. That's gonna be zero, that's gonna be zero, that's gonna be zero, that's gonna be zero. Every term's gonna be zero, except for this one involving a sub zero. And so, what is this going to be equal to? Well, let me write it this way. Let's take the integral of the definite integral. Let me see where I have some space. So we're gonna take the definite integral from zero to two pi of a sub zero dt. Well, that's the same thing. Once again, we could take the coefficient out of a sub zero, and I could just put the dt like, I could just put the dt like this. And so that's going to be equal to a sub zero times t, let me do that in magenta, times t evaluated at two pi and zero, which is going to be equal to a sub zero times two pi minus zero, times two pi minus zero. Well, that's just two pi a sub zero. So I could just write this, a sub zero times two pi. So this expression right here is a sub zero times two pi. So let me scroll down a little bit. So I can rewrite this thing up here. The integral from zero to two pi of f of t dt f of t dt, which is equal to this integral. Well, we've just figured out that the integral from zero to two pi of a sub zero dt is the same thing as a sub zero times two pi, is equal to a sub zero times two pi, times two pi. 
And so now it's actually pretty straightforward to solve for a sub zero. A sub zero is going to be equal to, a sub zero is going to be equal to one over two pi, one over two pi times the definite integral from zero to two pi. I'll just write the dt of, uh, let me write it a little bit. dt of f of t, I'll just write it like this, f of t dt. And this is pretty cool, because think about what this is. This over here, this is the average value of our function. Uh, uh, this is the average value of f over the interval zero to two pi. Average value of f over over the interval over we could say the interval from zero, the interval from zero to two pi. And hopefully that actually makes intuitive sense. Because if I am, if you just think of it from an engineering point of view, if we were just trying to engineer this, trying to just play around with these numbers, you know all of these cosines and sines, they oscillate between positive one and negative one. So in order to actually represent this function, you're gonna have to shift that, that oscillation. And sum of a bunch of oscillations, it's still gonna be an oscillation that's going to vary between uh, a, a positive one and our negative one. And in order to shift it, well that's what our a sub zero is going to do. And so what you, it makes sense that you would want to shift the oscillation so it oscillates around the average value of the function. Or you could say the average value of the function over, over an interval that's, that's representative of a period of that function. And so that is what a sub zero is doing. a sub zero is just going to be that average value of the function.